Hey everybody, and thanks for watching 3dmotive.com. I'm Bill Cladis, and in this video we're going to cover all of the basics for Cascade, which is UDK's built-in particle and visual effects editor. Now this video is aimed at beginner levels. We're assuming that you have some basic UDK skills, some very basic 3D modeling skills in a package of your choice, and an intermediate understanding of an image editing program like Photoshop. So let's go ahead and get started, and let's talk about VFX artists or visual effects artists. So what is it that we visual effects artists do, and how do we fit into the game production pipeline? Well, you can think of movies like big Hollywood productions that have good special effects, and they do things like explosions. They might do, let's say, some kind of sci-fi energy buildup for a character that's about to do a special move or power, right? Then there are people that do that for movies, and visual effects artists do the exact same thing for games, right? So this can be for real-time gameplay. It can also be for cinematics that are real-time or pre-rendered. So what we're going to do in this volume is we're going to take a really methodical approach to uh, understanding almost everything there really is to know about Cascade, and we're going to ease into it by making some really simple effects as we go along. So let's take a look at the samples package that we have here. If you use the project files link and download it, you'll have this 3D motive underscore TCBG, and TCBG is the Cascade Beginner's Guide. And if you go ahead and open that, you can see everything is organized into the different chapters that we're about to do here. Now I'm going to use the, um, I believe it's from chapter 7 here, the rocket ship example. Let's kind of analyze this and what's going on here. What we've got here is, you know, we've got some really hot energetic combustible element happening, and then it's transitioning as it's turning into smoke, and then it turns into something a little darker here. And I'm actually just going to change our background color here so you can see that smoke just a little better there. So particle systems, right, are illusory. They're they're, what I mean by that is they're a total illusion because we're giving the impression of, you know, volume and motion and all that stuff. And this looks, as we go around, like it has, a, you know, it has volume, it occupies space. But all we're really doing is just generating sprites and putting different images on those sprites. So sprites are just these little flat polygonal planes. And if I pause it, it's kind of hard to see. But if we look at the top here, it's just a little square with an image on it. And then we take that square and we move it over time. We adjust the size, we adjust the color, we adjust the uh, alpha, the rotation. And if we do it all right, we get something that's a little believable. So if we go back to our lit view mode here, we can see what looks like to be some kind of rocket trail. And this is actually two particle systems happening right now. So what's happening is halfway here where I'm putting my mouse, this is actually transitioning into totally new particles. And that transition pretty much is seamless unless you're really looking for it, right? So if I go ahead and turn it off, you can see now that the, the combustible part at the top uh, is invisible. So we could take a look at some of the other examples we'll, we'll learn to make here. This is our orbit example. This is kind of like a wispy vortex happening here. Uh, if we turn off the init velocity module, this turns into a very fast kind of nebula that we could use in space. If we just slowed that down, that'd be a lot more believable. We can look at our health pickup. This is one of the more simple examples we'll be using. But we can notice here is that we're actually using meshes, right? So we've got our little health cross here. And we've got this light ray that has soft edges, which is really a cylinder. So if we look in wireframe, this is actual geometry. But inside the material, we'll learn how to do some cool tricks so that we get fall off. So we never really see that hard edge. And this gives us the cool appearance of like a light ray or something like that. And now the other thing to keep in mind too is that, you know, visual effects and particle systems aren't always meant to be real, right? So you can think of a game that has a very stylized approach, and the particles might have a much more vector look to them or a sci-fi approach, right? So these are two examples that I've done personally for freelance. This is a trigger, uh, trigger beam excuse me, that explodes. And we've got, if I pause it, um, lots of cool different elements happening here. We've got some meshes here with those cubes. We've got these shock waves here in the middle, which give volume, you know, and we're doing some Fresnel tricks. We're also doing some distortion with the material, so we can see the grid here that's jiggling around. So this is you know, an, another example of, of a different approach. This is very stylized. This might be, um, without using names, this might be used for like a music game, let's say. And then the final example I'll use is actually from the uh, visual, visual effects production series that we've done here for 3D Motive. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause it because so much is happening so fast. But this is a very you know, visually complex and in-depth particle system that's using, I think it's about six emitters here we can see, and lots of cool different material tricks happening with this panning element. We're using lots of different meshes, so this has really good volume as we go around. And this has a very, you know, 
sci-fi stylized approach to it. So these are the different things, and this is the power that we have as visual effects artists. So let's go ahead and get started with our first chapter, and we're going to talk about the Cascade interface.